So it's a really interesting argument, this suggestion that poor posture is the cause of all of our aches and pains, whether it be your text neck or your pelvic tilt or your spine is out of alignment, it's all the cause of our pain. But is it? Let's find out. Hey guys, I'm Khalid, welcome back to Clinical Physio. So I have to start by saying that when I qualified 14 years ago, I absolutely focused in on bad posture in all of my patients. But on reflection, now, I realise that was probably a mistake. So as physios, we were brought up to detect and correct bad posture automatically, whether that be your patient whose chin was tilted forwards, whether that be slumped shoulders, or whether that be your patient standing with an anteriorly tilted pelvis. But recently, there's been loads of really interesting discussion amongst other physios in the profession that have kind of led us to think, this changes everything. So number one, if there is such a thing as bad posture, why isn't every person on this planet in pain? Because I can bet you any money that at some point each day, somebody is slouched in their chair at home, or somebody in the office is hunched over their desk, or someone is going to be looking at their phone down with their head really in a flex position. So if that's the case, why aren't we all in pain? Point number two, exposing our body to different postures at different times of the day can actually be a good thing we're much more likely to develop a more adaptable and flexible body as a result of giving it a little bit of stress every now and again. By contrast, if we stay upright and rigid all day long, we're actually less equipped to cope with any natural changes in our posture that may happen during the day. Yep, yeah, that's right. We could be less prone to injury by being able to cope with different postures every now and again. Point number three, now this is a really interesting one. Grab yourself what is considered to be a good posture. Right, so upright chest, nice straight back, neck up tall, and I want you to hold this for five straight minutes. Go. Is it me or does this feel worse than before? Point number four, the evidence highlights to us that what we perceive to be a bad posture doesn't actually always lead to pain. Richards et al. 2021 analysed the sitting posture of late adolescents, late teenagers, and assessed whether or not it was a risk factor for persistent neck pain in their early adult years, perhaps the years of 22 to 23 years old. Incredible results. Sitting neck posture at 17 was not a risk factor for persistent neck pain at 22 years of age in men, whereas in women, more relaxed postures, such as slumped thorax, forward head or intermediate postures, were protective of neck pain when compared to upright posture. Of course, there are other studies. Correa et al. 2020 looked at 582 volunteers aged 18 to 65, so not just young people, and measured and analysed the angle of their neck whilst using their phone. They found that the cervical flexion angle of the standing participant did not associate with the prevalence of neck pain. And another really good study that I highly recommend you read is that by Slater et al. 2019, and they highlight seven key points to change the narrative on posture. Some of my favorite key points that they raise is that there is no single correct posture, that adopting a more comfortable posture is totally safe compared to what we consider to be a perfect posture, and also that one size certainly not does fit all. What can be comfortable for one patient could be completely different for another. Okay, so finally, point number five, my own personal view. What should we be doing as physiotherapists and as patients regarding posture? Well, first of all, don't do what I said in the beginning of the video and automatically assume that as soon as you see bad posture, it's definitely going to be the cause of your patient's pain. Instead, let's listen to Slater et al. 2019. There isn't a one-size-fits-all approach to posture. Everyone's different and we should treat every patient differently. So there's going to be times when you see a patient with slumped shoulders, you change it and they feel better. And there's also going to be times when you see a patient with slumped shoulders and you change it and it doesn't feel better. But that's the point we're taking an individual approach to every patient. Get them into different positions, get them into different movements, and then, as Slater et al. 2019 said, find what's comfortable for them. That's much more likely to provide you with a successful direction. And secondly, what's more important than having the perfect posture all the time is having a body which is adaptable, 
flexible and strong enough to cope with different postures and different loads during the day. So no matter what your posture is, get exercising, get moving, get stronger, get healthier. These things are much more likely to lead to long-term success. And so whether that means giving your patients specific exercises relevant to their condition, or whether that be just simple advice on going for a walk or going on a bike ride more often, do what's comfortable for you and do whatever it is that you need in order to have a stronger, more adaptable and more flexible body. So guys, if you've enjoyed this video, please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for more updates, or you can find even more from us on our website, clinicalphysio.com. My name's Khalid. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you really soon here on Clinical Physio.